Hello, my friends. Welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Sana. If you are new here, I would love if you can like and subscribe. I would love to have you along for my journey. I would also love to follow your journey as well. So definitely drop me a comment if you are new. I would love to learn a little bit about you and so far what you've accomplished on this journey. Or if you are completely new, I would love to root you on and just be a form of motivation as well as some support. I'm going to go ahead and follow this little intro with the meals that I've had so far. So I'm going to have this going back from this Monday, uh, which this Monday would have been February 26th and it's going to go up until Wednesday. That way I'm able to provide you all six meals worth. I am still, even though with pregnancy, I'm still doing two meals a day. I really do not have a desire for breakfast. I have never been the type, even prior to even starting keto, January of 2019, I never was a breakfast person. So when I learned about intermittent fasting, little did I know I was intermittent fasting before I even knew what exactly it was. I just thought it was just me just skipping breakfast. I didn't know there was a term or a name for what I was doing. But it's it's been very, very easy for me to simply just go into a brunch and have my dinner because it's very much the normal to me. Um, and if I ever do feel like I want to have something, it's literally my preference for wanting something hot in the morning. Um, so what I was incorporating while I was doing keto prior to doing carnivore uh, starting last year, January, was I was actually having hot tea in the morning. It was a cultural thing for me with me being part Turkish, part Indian. Tea is a, a huge thing that we would have had at breakfast growing up, um, even having, you know, after dinner, tea was a big component, culturally just kind of growing up. So it was very easy to do throughout adulthood and then being able to have clean versions of having tea during the four years that I was keto. So it was something I still very much incorporated. So if I ever had a desire during carnivore to have something, hot or warm uh, early, you know, first thing in the morning, I always go in with my bone broth. So as some of you would have seen on previous videos, that's very much what I did was starting off with just having bone broth, especially when I had to do my at home blood sugar testing for two weeks worth because I skipped the 50 grams of the glucose sugar uh, the glucose intolerance testing that the OB office generally requires. I skipped that, so I did the at-home blood sugar testings as I covered in a previous video. So I did have to have an actual breakfast to be able to test two hours after that breakfast meal. So that's when I went in with the bone broth. So it was definitely helpful and useful to be able to get that meal in to be able to track a blood sugar reading for that. <clears throat> and um, other than that, I've been keeping with the two meals a day to mat. Um, but that is what you all are going to see. I've been keeping things very, very simple as some of you would have heard on my previous video that covered my pregnancy updates. If you have not watched that video, definitely watch that video because it's definitely going to explain why some of my meals, you're going to see the incorporation of vegetables that are considered part of the proper human diet. Um, so that is my option for incorporating carbohydrates because that was something that was uh, requested by the obstetrician was to incorporate carbohydrates. But as far as my opinion, being on the proper human diet for over five years now, my interpretation from the knowledge that I've gained now, carbohydrates are very different to me 
as far as what this obstetrician considered as healthy carbohydrates. So I'm not going to be incorporating things like she suggested, like rice and potatoes, sweet potatoes, pasta, toast. <laughs> um, so meaning toast, bread, I will not be incorporating those. Unless it's a keto version, a clean keto version that I will be making myself, <laughs> those are things I will not be incorporating as far as anything that would be considered processed or anything that would be part of box products or packaged products that are very much ingredients that are the standard American diet. I will not be doing that. Me doing that and her truly not understanding what it is to be over 300 pounds she does not have the, the context. Uh, she does not have the firsthand personal understanding. So I am definitely showing her a little bit of grace. For me, I am a strong believer um, in what Gandhi had said. So Gandhi had said, be the change you wish to see in the world. And very much so, I'm going to have that be my motivation, have that be my mantra, if you will, that I'm going to be the change that this obstetrician definitely needs to see. And I am just hoping that I can kind of awaken her eyes. I just hope that she is open enough <laughs> to see how successful I was doing it my way um, versus what she wanted to simply uh, push onto me. Um, so, I appreciate everyone's feedback because everyone kind of felt the same way. It was pretty much the same consensus that I had where um, it was just straight up rude the way that she came at me. Um, but I just, I really had to compose myself because I do have to realize I am pregnant um, and it's certainly not the place uh, for me to kind of go uh, completely Jersey girl buck wild on her. I definitely had to compose myself. Unfortunately, that is the best of the best obstetrician office that we have available in our area. And they actually have numerous locations. And this particular obstetrician, she rotates just like the rest of the obstetricians. They rotate at all the locations. So it's kind of like there's really at some point in time, there's not going to be any avoiding her. Then I also have to think she very well could be my delivering obstetrician. So I want to be able to show her a little bit of grace and not full on attack her. But then again, to fairly stand my ground to what I want, to what my expectations are. And also because I'm the one that experienced being over 330 pounds and not wanting to go back to that wanting to hold on to this over 147 pounds that I have been able to triumphantly just lose off of my body. I just, I'm a completely different person now. I do not want to go back to the person that I was. I wholeheartedly just love my life now and just the way my body feels. I am truly living my best life with 147 pounds off of me. I have to really remind myself that very well, 147 pounds could be a whole person, an actual adult grown person could be 147 pounds. And that is what I have been able to have released from my body. That is a lot of burden and a lot of stress that is now gone. And I will never want to go back to anything close to what I experienced at being in the 330 pound range. No way, no how. But enough of the chatting. I'm going to go ahead and show you all the meals that I've incorporated. Still embracing the simplicity. And I definitely want to stress that to everybody. Anybody that is definitely starting off new to the proper human diet, whether it be keto, ketovore, carnivore, 
keep things simple. Do not worry about any form of complicated anything. I may do a little bit of recipe here and there, but honestly, pick out some ingredients on the proper human diet, put them together, and you will absolutely have something delicious in the end. You know, just really focus on salting everything properly. Do not be afraid of salt. Um, do not listen or be brainwashed any longer of all the bad things uh, when it comes to salt. You definitely have to make sure. I definitely suggest watching Dr. Ken Berry's videos um, because there are definitely your differences in the salts that we should be using. Not all of these salts are created equally. So definitely do your research, read your labels and everything will be okay, I promise you. But let's go ahead and get into those meals. And as always, my friends, I appreciate you all. I thank you all for watching. And until the next one, take care, my friends. All right, my friends, for this Monday, I'm going in with some leftovers. I have these, it's ground chicken kebab skewers um, that I simply just seasoned up with Middle Eastern type of seasonings and just shape them and bake them in the oven. On the side here, if you have not watched my latest video, definitely check out my latest video because you will understand why you now see tomato is a fruit, but to see a fruit like this or veggie in general, it will explain why this is now being incorporated. <laughs> and then I do have just a few slices of some block cheddar cheese, but this is what I'm actually going to go in with for my first meal. It is almost 1 p.m. over here. I'm literally going to get off of work in a couple minutes, but I am at the point where I definitely needed to eat something. Things have just been super busy at work that I have not had a step away moment until now where i was able to kind of quickly put this together but this is what i'm going to go in with and dive in while it's still hot but this is going to do me for this monday first meal all right to wrap up this monday night i'm going in with two of these aldi it is frozen pre-packaged burger patties 75 25 ratio with some extra sharp cheddar cheese on top of both under a bed of romaine lettuce that we picked up at the farmer's market. I do have a little bit of red onion that I'm gonna be trying out along with some pickles and some clean yellow mustard, as well as more tomatoes on the side, salted with some Redmond salt. And if I do say so myself, this looks amazing. They do say you eat with your eyes first, so it's visually appealing and hopefully it is just as tummy appealing as well but this is going to wrap me up for this money night all right my friends happy tuesday for this tuesday brunch i'm going in with a really quick and easy so as you see i had it covered that way the top could cook a little bit but this is simply i sauteed in some butter some red onion i also added some tomato, spinach, and also two of the 75-25 Aldi burger patties that was leftovers from last night. Allow that to saute a little bit. Then I added in four eggs, scrambled that around in the pan, added this lid over here. That way the top could cook a little bit. And I crumbled some feta cheese over the top, recovered it again. That way that could get just a little bit creamy but as you can see it's definitely helpful to be patient with it i'm going to try to do this one-handed here because <clears throat> the pan is definitely a little bit heavy but it's definitely easy to use a non-stick pan because as you can see that slid out really well but this is what i'm going to dive in with as you could see it's still steamy hot but this will do me for this tuesday brunch all right, my friends, for this Tuesday night's dinner, we are going to go ahead and Blackstone. I'm going to show you guys. We purchased this at Costco. It is the same cut of meat that you would have seen that I used in that beef jerky 
video that I have. This is a beef loin New York shabu shabu. Um, it is, as you can see, priced at 9.99 cents a pound. And this is 3.20 pounds for a total of $31.97. So definitely not bad for the portion that you get. And the lighting is not the best, but as you can see, they are thin cuts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use these seasonings that I have here. I'm going to go in with some tahine, some garlic powder, paprika, parsley, as well as some ground cumin. And I'm going to simply just season it all up and I'm going to take it out to the Blackstone Grill and I'll show you guys a little bit of that clip. But because these are so thinly sliced, they are not going to take long at all on the Blackstone. But I will show you guys a little bit of a clip of them on the Blackstone Grill as well as once they are done and plated. So I will see you guys with an update of what my dinner plate will look like. All right, my friends, for this Tuesday night's dinner, Taco Tuesday, if you will, I'm going in with, as you all saw on the Blackstone, we did that shabu shabu meat, that thin sliced meat from Costco with just a little bit of some sauteed red onion. I have just a few slices of tomato here, some slices of it's this type of avocado, the green big avocado. So I have some slices of that that I'm going to enjoy. Dollop of daisy sour cream and this shredded cheese. I just shred it myself off the cheddar block. But this is what's going to do me for this Tuesday. And as you can see, I don't need any wraps. <laughs> I don't need any taco or anything like that. You can still definitely accomplish a really delicious taco Tuesday minus the taco tortillas bread any of the grainy stuff you can enjoy it just as is and trust me you will still feel absolutely satisfied which i certainly am with this plate here i'm going to be so happy with this so i'm going to go ahead and dive in with the family and i will see you all come midweek hump day All right, my friends, I'm kind of rushing. I made a chaffle. It is just egg and uh, sharp cheddar cheese, just the same one that I shredded off the block. I did have some in a Ziploc baggie, so I just mixed it up with some egg. Right now, I'm at the point that I don't measure when I make chaffles. I just make like a big batch. I've been making them for over five years now for our keto kids and husband. So I just have the chaffle, a little bit of lettuce, two slices of some farmer's market tomato and two leftover. This is the last of the LD 7525 frozen burger patties. So I'm just going to go ahead and use them up because we are definitely part of the waste, not want, not club. So this is what I'm going to go in with for this Wednesday brunch. All right, my friends for this Wednesday night's dinner, I'm going to show you guys some of the prep that I did for tonight's dinner. I have some ground lamb. This is three pounds worth into meatballs. I used some Redmond salt as well as the following seasonings and simply just kind of mixed it around. And I did use this cookie scoop is what I used to actually um, make sure each one was equally sized. It's not anything about aesthetics. It's simply just so they all just simply cook evenly. And then for the side dish, because as you all know, I need to add in some carbs. So I am venturing out with Ketovore. So in the oven, we have here some radishes that I gotten from the farmer's market. All I did was I sprayed it down with some avocado oil, seasoned it with some salt, and just toss it around. I'm gonna let it bake for 350 degrees for 40 minutes. And then as far as the lamb, it's gonna go in the oven at 425 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes is generally what they take. So I will update you guys once I have my food plated up.
All right, my friends, here is everything plated up that I showed you all that I had cooked. So here is those lamb meatballs, the baked radish with a dollop of some daisy sour cream. But this is going to do me for this Wednesday night's dinner. Thank you.